to the Monash Journalism webinar this evening on our Graduate Certificate and our Master's programs. Before we make an official start, I would like to take a moment to first um, acknowledge the lands on which I'm speaking to you today, but also where uh, Monash's campuses are located and which we'll take a moment to pay our respects to their elders past and present. My name is Kim Sara. It's an absolute pleasure to welcome all of you who are watching here, wherever you're viewing us from um, tonight. We really appreciate your time, as I know many of us are housebound, as I am right now, speaking to you from home in my stairwell. And I know that while we're being told we have a lot of time on our hands, um, I know I've been busier than ever, and I'm sure many of you have too. So we appreciate your time in tuning in tonight. The other people that you can see on camera here with me, we have both of our program directors for our graduate journalism program, uh, Faye Anderson and also Matt Mitchell, who are gonna join me in delivering tonight's session. And we're also super excited, Holly Earl, one of our graduates, has very kindly offered to join us. So thank you, Holly. And you'll get to hear from her experience in the program and where she's working at the moment as well. The idea of tonight's session as you've tuned in is we want to be able to provide you with as much information as you need to make a really informed decision around what your graduate study options are going to look like and how that's going to work best for you. So we'll be talking through how the programs work, the types of opportunities that are there for you, as well as how that's going to align for your particular interests and your career direction. Whether you're transitioning into these types of uh, roles and career, or whether you're someone who's working in the field already and looking to really upskill and take your qualifications and experience to the next level. To give some context around uh, Monash Arts, so this is where the program sits at Monash. Um, what I want to show you here is the breadth of the types of graduate programs that we teach into here and also reach, uh, research into as well. So journalism sits, as you'll hear a little bit more later, in our School of uh, Media, Film and Journalism alongside quite complementary programs you'll see here around communication and media, culture and creative industries, and also strategic communications management. But what's really nice here is all of these types of areas are taught across our faculty and complement one another. So if you've got also maybe an interest around politics or those types of areas, we've got international relations, industrial development, um, plenty around language and linguistics, culture, and even areas of bioethics as well. And that comes in quite handy if you're doing certain entry options, which we'll talk about later, where you may even have some opportunities to cross over with some of the units. And I will mention, you're gonna probably have some features from my housemates behind me, as I've just seen come through. And I believe dogs for some people that are tuning in as yeah. well. Uh, what I want to just touch on before I hand over to Matt and Faye to talk through the journalism program is there's a number of different features we want to tell you about, but probably some of the top five across all of the arts masters at Monash is, and these are things that we get feedback from our graduates, from our students and also employers, is these five points here. So one big point that we're really proud of is the flexibility and choice in these programs. One of the areas we talk about in that is you can actually come into us, this is where the flexibility comes in, with a completely unrelated background and qualification. Um, and that means you may have come to us maybe as an engineer or working in IT or working in a science or pharmaceutical background. And you can actually enter these types of programs. There's not a prerequisite for you to study this before. The bonus, if you have studied something like that, is you may actually be eligible for credit. And I'll talk a little bit more later about how that works, and particularly maybe if any of you've got any questions around that. Second point there, while we're not traveling right at the moment, uh, obviously with COVID-19, Arts at Monash is the place to be if you're looking for any international opportunities. So as an institution, Monash sends the most students overseas out of all of the institutions around the country, around two to three times more than the average. So what that means is if you're looking for these opportunities, you're definitely in the right place for that. These are opportunities to go typically around two weeks overseas if you're doing a study tour, or if it were an exchange, it's usually around a semester. That does require a little bit more work to fit in, but not impossible. And these are done for credit and often have uh, quite generous uh, funding to be able to assist with that, depending on what you're looking at doing. They can, be take, uh, they can also be done um, as an internship, which you can see there is the third option. We have a really great work integrated learning team who are there for you to be able to utilize, take advantage of as much as you need to in your studies. And they're a team that manage relationships with around 600 different providers locally, interstate and overseas. So these are intern opportunities that you can take in your degree to get you credit and really importantly, as you probably be aware, getting those extra skills as well in industry, building your connections and getting a real feel for what that's going to look like for you as a role after you graduate. Fourth one that's there is really important if you've got an interest in research, as you can see there, there is an optional research pathway. Some students come to us and want to do purely a coursework uh, program and that is absolutely fine and you can do that. 
if you're someone, however, who has got an interest in coursework and maybe wants to include the research, this is where doing a degree with us at a research intensive university, so part of group of eight, with a number of the areas of study that we had listed before, either being in top 50 or top 100 around the world, this is where you can get some real great access to academics and research opportunities in your degree. If you're that way inclined, you can even use the thesis as an option to then upgrade to a higher uh, research qualification like a PhD. As I mentioned, that's not for everyone, but that is an option that you can take advantage of. The fifth point that's there uh, is around our Arts Graduate Leadership Program, and I always tell students considering our degrees about this, as it's open to anyone who's doing an Arts Master's degree. This is a curated session by our Director of Graduate Studies, Associate Professor Vicky Peel, who gets a number of leaders in to run workshops with people in this program throughout their studies, around identifying your leadership styles, um, running different PD sessions around networking, around career development, around what your career directory looks like. And it also includes an opportunity for you to apply those leadership skills to mentor incoming students. And where the flip side of that works really nicely is if you're coming to us as a new student, it means that you also have access to a mentor who's further into their studies. And that is totally optional because we know some students come in with quite a lot of experience and quite fine to go straight through with that. But others like myself who have returned to study this year after about a 10 year gap, um, haven't had that experience for a little while. So that's where these mentors can be quite nice in transitioning you back into that space. And what is quite an exciting part of this session, you've heard from me a little bit about the faculty, but what I'd love to be able to do in, a, in just a second is introduce Faye Anderson and Matt Mitchell to talk you through what it is about this program um, that makes it special and what we do at Monash in the journalism space. But as just a way of introduction for who you're gonna hear from, um, Faye Anderson has uh, been with the School of Media, Film and Journalism for quite some time with us. Um, as an acclaimed expert in the field of media history, you've published quite widely across a number of areas. Some of those including uh, the history of war, oral history, press photography, crime, the media, genocide, migration, and plenty more um, that I could read off um, from when I've been stalking your profiles <laughs> today. Um, and if I've understood correctly, you've published four books. Another one is on its way next year. Is that That's right? That's absolutely right, if I can meet the deadline, and I'm sure students can appreciate that. Yeah, and I realise as you read that, it's very dark material, so I apologise to everyone in advance. No, there's, there's, there's lots there that we need experts in. Um, and Matt, who's also been hiding in the background as well, um, is another one of our well-respected um, academics and also an experienced journalist as well, having written quite widely for a number of Australian outlets, so from the Australian uh, through to National Geographic, CNN, Men's Health and Vogue Australia. So without further ado, I'd love to hand over to both of you, Faye and Matt, to talk through the program. I Thanks. love that it ended with Vogue and Men's Health as well. That was Yeah, they, they left out the <laughs> chief of staff at some point, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Had you been banned? <laughs> so Matt and I would like to welcome you all and um, we're very excited to talk about the Master of Journalism and what that entails. And we'll, in many ways, um, sort of bounce back back and forth and, we'd, um, and talk about both the structure but also the opportunities that we hope that you will um, achieve from the Master of Journalism. Indeed, we will. Okay, so we've got a bit of a slide. Um, I can't really see it, I'm sorry, Kim, but if you can let me know where we're up to, then we can go from there. We ha have we introduced Holly? Oh, yeah, we did. Oh. Kim introduced Holly. Holly's sitting there. Holly is a graduate from um, Monash Journalism, for those who don't know. Yes. A very... Very accomplished. Well done, Holly. So I can see the PowerPoint slide. So in many ways, what you what you can see at the moment is just an overview about what we'll talk about. So the discussion about journalism and the state of journalism, um, what it is and why is it important. Uh, we'll briefly discuss our amazing staff and the core structure and also the possibilities and opportunities that we'll provide. And lastly, the skills and also the jobs that many of our Master of Journalism graduates have, have got. I'll take this bit, Faye. I would like to really address, and I think, um, you know, we often see a lot, of, um, a lot of, I guess, pessimism around the media and around jobs, particularly in Australia, not least of which when we see newsrooms, uh, News Corporation, for example, last week announced that they were going to stop print publications of some of their very long running um, newspapers and also closing some as well. 
We've also seen COVID-19 see the closure of some magazines, et cetera, too. But I think it's, it, I think it's important to acknowledge that this has been going on for some time and that journalism is actually really evolving. Um, and it's the media that's evolving. And, and journalism in itself is not in decline. In fact, journalism has actually never been sort of more thriving than it has at the moment. Um, I've got a little um, note here. These figures just came out yesterday. These are the top six Australian websites. So Australian websites in terms of traffic. And they are ABC News, Daily Mail, 9.com.au, 7news.com.au, Guardian Australia, and news.com.au. So these are fresh figures. And they show that um, the top six websites in Australia for April 2020 were all news websites. Obviously, that's in no small part due to COVID-19. But also, if you look, like there are over 10 million unique views for each of those as well. That's never actually been achieved before. It, interestingly as well, is that four of those publications, so the Daily Mail, Nine, Seven and the Guardian Australia, weren't operating in Australia about seven years ago. So these have happened and grown quite sporadically. So that's just to look at just one section where the media has actually evolved. So newspapers in their traditional sense and um, magazines, for example, in their traditional sense, may not be doing um, as well as you possibly would think. But even then, I think that we'll probably see that shift back anyway. Um, particularly when we look at um, papers in Australia, such as the Saturday paper, for example, which comes out, not surprisingly, on Saturdays. So that's part of the Morris Schwartz Group. That has actually done um, actually spectacularly well. So it has focused, instead of actually doing breaking news and, and those types of stories, has been more introspective and analytical in the works that they actually publish. So I think you'll find that those types, I think we'll find newspapers and magazines involved into that, uh, evolve rather into that. And <clears throat> so it's important to note that um, don't take on board the pessimism. What Monash does and what we do really well is to teach our students to identify what the future will be and to take charge of that future. So we create the leaders that will actually create the media of tomorrow. And that's very dear to us and something that we're very much on board with. So we believe in entrepreneurialism and we believe in showing you how to do that. And, um, and there's a number of our students that have actually gone a non-traditional path and actually still excelled. Uh, I can think of um, two that come to mind straight away. Um, one wanted to get into food writing, for example, and uh, that's a difficult nut to crack. Um, so instead, she actually started her own, uh, her own uh, content writing business, which led to its own sort of new series, etc. as well. And she's gone from strength to strength. And she, you know, manages to have her own living without the need to actually, you know, draw income from traditional media sources, for example. So I think it's important to really focus on the optimistic and the opportunities that are actually there as well. Okay, that's enough gabbing on for me about... Uh, Oh, look, let's go into journalism. I'll do this bit too. If you You'll like. do that bit. Okay, fine. So why is journalism important? And I think it really is important. And this is something that we can't, especially in light of what's actually happening in the world today, is the importance of being able to verify information. There are a lot of sources. Um, there's a lot of voices out there that we can all listen to. You only have to look at the amount of preponderance of uh, activity coming from, say, QAnon, et cetera, as well. Um, just incredible sources you, you only need to go to social media and have a look at your own stream to see the amount of fake news that is proliferating as well where journalism comes through is that we are trained we have ethics we know the law in which we're operating etc as well and we have a determination and that is to ensure that the facts and stories that we report are accurate and so that is the distinction that we have and to me the evidence is no more true than looking at where the credible sources are at the moment. So if you look at April 2020, those figures from before, you can see that people are resorting to the traditional news sources. They go to where, they go to the outlets that they trust. And I think that that is, is quite telling. And this is where we teach those skills. We teach, journal, we teach the journalists, our students, to look for the information, to verify facts, and to ensure that everything they have is accurate, to do it fairly, and to ensure that we're impartial and to make sure that there's a degree of honesty in how we do that as well. So these are the, the basics of journalistic practice and they form the absolute bedrock in what we teach. And for us, that's incredibly important. And it's not to think also that, um, that every, all of our students will actually graduate as journalists either. Some actually want to just pick up the skills in journalism and then apply that in another area. And in fact, we get quite a few of these as well. So 
For me, I've actually, I, I've found a number of students who have studied journalism. Um, I have one graduate who is now the national, um, national PR director for Sony Music, for example. They have taken the skills of journalism and employers have absolutely loved the fact, fact that they know how the media operates. They know how journalists work. And so they take those skills and they apply them um, in the industries that they go into as well. So if we can go to the next slide, please, Kim, I can see the slides now. So for me, I love the digital era. I love this entire disruption. I don't think it's uh, something to be scared of at all. Um, if we went back, the other thing too I'd like to say, when I started out as a journalist, which was a long, long time ago in, in a very small, not a small town, but in Brisbane, there was, um, we started off with 300 graduates, uh, 300 in first year at University of Queensland. We had 35 graduate, and there was only one newspaper in my town a couple of radio stations and not many TV stations. There were fewer jobs then than there are now. And there are opportunities like content producer, uh, social media director, et cetera, et cetera. And jobs that honestly just did not exist back then. So to me, the digital era has been nothing but an absolute cornucopia of opportunity for the entrepreneurial journalist who actually can learn a lot of skills. And this is where it's also interesting because we learn skills like video and audio, infographics, photography, data analysis, data visualization. We teach our students these skills because we know that these are the skills that employers want. Not just employers in the media, but employers in communications, employers in government, employers in strategic policy units, etc. We know that these are the skills that they're after. It's not enough just to be able to write and fact check, etc. although they will always be the most important parts the most telling that you need to have that fully formed journalist nowadays that fully formed communications professional because that's what they're looking for um if we can go to the next slide now thank you um so like i said you know i love the idea of being able to use multiple different forms to tell a story as well and i think we'll actually see a lot more opportunities come up i think we can see new forms of ways to tell stories as well we could be, for example, there could be a lot more immersive journalism. We just don't know what's going to happen with uh, virtual reality. We don't know how that's going to work. So there are those spaces which offer amazing opportunities to actually allow people to immerse themselves into a story as well. So it's looking beyond the traditional of the black and white newsprint. It's looking beyond the, you know, the 1080 output on a, um, on a television station on the news there. The journalists of tomorrow will think about what's beyond BR even, they will look to that. And that's what we hope our students and what we encourage our students and teach our students to become is to become that vanguard of the future, is to be the journalist um, of tomorrow that will actually take the lead and make the decisions to evolve the media for tomorrow as well. So to us, it's important to be entrepreneurial, resilient, et cetera, as well. We're one of the largest schools in Australia, I think probably the largest, Faye, is that correct? Yep, that's true. Yeah, so we're big. And with that actually comes a lot of opportunity. So our graduates, we have many, many graduates out there as well, um, who we actually call on and they become, um, by having so many graduates, they move into positions, they move higher up in those positions. It opens up a lot of opportunities for our um, future students, for example, to actually do better placements because um, we already have our emissaries out there that have already graduated but also those tend to become employers as well. And then they make decisions and Monash graduates tend to like Monash graduates. So um, it's another advantage of actually being in a big school. We, um, so the, um, the teachers that make up, the lecturers that, et cetera, that make up the, the School of Journalism, um, we've been around for a long time and we're made up of historians, we're made up of practicing journalists, we're made up of esteemed academics as well. And to us at Monash, that's a really important um, mix. It's not just about journalistic practice. You need to understand how journalism works. And that's where it's the important part of Monash and what our difference is, is that we also bring in academic rigor. And that is an important facet that not every university does. And you need to be able to think critically. You can't just um, go through and just bash out your story. We make you think about the consequences of that story. We make you think about how the, what the process was for you to go through that story and reflect on that afterwards on your journalistic practice. Because we're we... Yeah, we're also very aware that not everyone wants to be a journalist. 
So one of our aims is to show students, um, if they don't necessarily want to go into journalism, as, as Matt mentioned, using those skills and investigation and how to rigorously uh, research and then they can apply those skills, whether it's in other communication industries or any industry. Um, and if they wish to go down the path that Kim mentioned, academia, they can do so as well. So it is that idea of, of exposing you to a diverse group of, of staff and also a diverse group of industries as well. Yes, very true. Okay, so Faye, this is your part. Uh, this is mine. So we're part of the School of Media, Film and Journalism, and we'll talk about those opportunities in a moment. We have other communication master programs. So we've got the Master of Media and Communication Studies, the Master sorry, of Strategic Communication, and the Master of Cultural and Creative Industries. And you've got those opportunities to take units and, and I'll show you some of those units in a moment um, as electives. Um, and we have a, quite a fluid um, sort of seamless uh, trajectory. So you might actually become more interested in media communication or we've had certain students that have actually left comms and come into journalism, um, but you have got that ability. The other really popular master is a combined master's, which is the Master of International Relations and Journalism, which is a double degree, which leads to two master degrees, but also allows students both that academic rigor and understanding of international relations and using the skills that you would acquire in journalism. Um, and it's not just the skills, we'll talk also about some other experiences, but really we also want you to learn how to research ethically and the idea of resilience, you know, how do you work um, and, and cope with all sorts of things that might occur. So you can actually see the structure here. Uh, we've got the core master study, which is introduction to journalism studies at a graduate level and the combination of, econ of academic and practice-based work, which um, Matt alluded to. So you get that solid foundation in all production technologies, print, video, audio, online, and still imagery and moving imagery. And that's really important because again, as Matt signaled, 20 years ago, you could specialise in print. Now there is an expectation that a journalist can jump into anything. Um, part B, which is additional, is um, the advanced expertise. So you focus on professional scholarly work, which contributes to a professional development portfolio. Um, journalists call it a showreel, but by the time you finish, you actually have a very, very um, significant portfolio to show um, your future employers. The coursework, which includes opportunities for internships, which we'll talk about um, in a moment, and the research thesis, which Kim alluded to, which is guarantees a pathway or, or allows a pathway to a high degree, um, whether at Monash or at another universities um, or international as well. And there's part C, which is a specialist study, which provides, again, further, uh, further opportunities to advance your studies in journalism or related field. Some also, if you've had other units that have been credited, we will count those as credits if you've previously done um, certain units. And so you don't necessarily have to commit to all of the years. These are our core units from 2021. And as you can see, um, they're both diverse, but they're very, very comprehensive as well. So you have an introduction to journalism practice. And I know as a, not as a journalist, but as a media historian, if I was faced with journalism, you know, um, it can be very intimidating, the technology, but we get a very good grounding and, and we show the students um, how they mediate that. Journalism in society is really about ethics and the law, which I think is particularly important, particularly with social media, um, that you're completely informed and guided by that. Studio and audio production is podcasting, audio, and also broadcasting. D digital journalism is the other facet. Reporting from the field, um, which is live reporting, and Matt can probably elaborate on that a little bit, and video journalism as well. So these are the core units that you need to do um, that makes up your Masters of Journalism. So very quickly, the introduction to journalism practice, to give you a very quick intro into that, is that we, we take you from the very start. We introduce you to what news values are and what makes news. We build on that from um, doing uh, rudimentary sort of writing a news story into a feature story into a radio news story, which is sort of the very beginning into broadcast. 
some of the other units, studio and audio production, we go into more advanced levels of video and audio and you actually present in a studio. So we have that sort of news reading um, uh, component in there as well. Reporting live from the field is actually a really key skill nowadays as well. It's being able to, to report both, not just uh, in terms of writing copy live um, as you go, it's actually about picking up a microphone and reporting live as well. It's also about how to coordinate um, there's a very strong international component to that unit as well, which is about how to coordinate, you know, um, to get uh, some coverage out of a disaster zone overseas, how to, um, what to do in a war zone, etc. as well. So it's actually very interesting. Sorry, Faye. It's okay. Um, everyone can read the journalism electives, but you can see investigative data, photography. International Journalism Field School is one of the study schools that we talk about where we'll, we take you overseas. Um, and um, you're sort of entrenched in different newsrooms. I've taken, I think, one where we went to New York, which was amazing, um, but we can elaborate on that. Research project um, and a research thesis. And you can see also some of the communication elective units. Um, and there's a, among many across the faculty that, it, you know, if you, if you think they're interesting, you should by all means, and you're encouraged to enrol in those, in those electives. Matt, do you want to go there? Yes, I'll go there. Okay, so like I said before, one of the things that we're very passionate about is that we know that our students um, are keen to get into careers and we very much help them get there. We'll touch on internships in a moment, but um, we know that you're here to actually get a job or you're here to actually advance yourself within the position you're already in. And because we're aware of that, we know how to help you achieve those goals as well. So for us, it's about um, taking you in from the very start and ensuring that when you graduate, as Faye said before, that you have a really strong portfolio, not just a transcript that shows your grades, not just a transcript that shows the subjects that you've done, but actually a body of work that you can show as the actual proof of your accomplishments throughout your degree. And I think that's actually a really important part as well. One thing that also sets us apart is the fact that we've invested into the infrastructure of what, what actually makes good journalism practice at the moment. We have a $3 million state-of-the-art uh, studio. We have a radio, we have one, two, three radio studios. We have multiple editing suites. We have a, a completely up-to-date uh, newsroom, which actually functions as a newsroom and a teaching space. And we have a studio, like, and we call it the Monash Media Lab, but it is an actual studio. So um, we do television news programs out of there. We do live, we have a full studio capability as well. And you learn the skills of actually putting a program to air, not just actually presenting and speaking, but being behind the scenes and the nuts and bolts of what takes something from an idea to an actual bulletin that's put to air as well. So it's one of our distinct differences in the fact of what we've invested in to actually um, ensure that our students leave and graduate completely industry ready. They walk straight from our newsroom straight into a complimentary newsroom in a functioning television station or radio station seamlessly. Um, we work, uh, our students work in every single, uh, basically every single, I know every single major city in Australia, in most newsrooms, in every platform, and they work overseas as well. We have a list and we track where all of our alumni are and we stay in touch with them as well because it's important for us to stay, to stay abreast of what's happening in the industry. Um, and also because it's, it's really rewarding for both to actually stay involved as well, which Holly can talk about as well. So for us, it's very much about trying to help you publish and get that work together and also build those uh, relationships for you to ensure that you can get the job that you actually want and the job that you actually deserve and what you invested in in the first place. So we're very committed to you along the way from the very first day of your very first semester right the way through to graduation and afterwards. And I think that's an important note as well, is that we're, we're, th we're there with you afterwards as well. It's not just a shake and a goodbye. We stay in touch with our alumni and we really um, take great pride in doing that as well. Can we go to the next one? Yeah, so the Media Lab, um, which probably is not the greatest shot, but um, we can- We would actually, actually usually be in the Media Lab having this conversation. That's right. Yeah. We Instead, were. we're all in our homes. <laughs> yeah. So it's actually not the uh, it's not the most you know amazing space that we would normally do. Yeah, we would be in the media lab, and you would probably be quite immersed and um, blown away by what we actually have. So unfortunately, you have to settle for our my dodgy backdrop at the moment. Anyway, <laughs> uh, 
this is our newsroom space here. So again, it's emulated on what you would expect to see at The Age here in Melbourne or the BBC in Shepherd's Bush in London. Um, this is an example of a radio studio, for example. You can see there's a full deck, exactly the um, production deck in the front there. There's a producer that's actually overseeing the program and a sound booth separate to where the talent is actually recording. And we can actually get up to six people in that, uh, in that space as well. So we can put a program live to air if we actually wanted to. It's actually modeled on the 3AW studios here in Melbourne. Um, and again, 3AW is, is the number one station here in Melbourne. So we have replicated those, uh, that studio to provide a seamless transition for our graduates to go and work in a radio studio of a leading um, broadcaster as well. And this is what I was talking about before about uh, control facilities. So to the right, you can see that there's a control room. There's a full color mixing deck. We actually have a, um, a VA, we have a director, we have a, and two producers over to the right as well. And they're all students, we're not. They're all students, yeah. And they're putting their own program to wear. So that's an important um, component. It's a really key skill that we teach every facet of that as well, which is, um, it's not just about standing in front of the camera. It's not just about being a reporter. It's about understanding how the whole thing comes together because that's actually what, if you know how it all comes together, you will be a much better media professional and a much better journalist. And if you know how it all comes together, you can actually work in any industry such as public relations or communications, which Holly will talk about, which actually also in, informs any career that you go into after, if you don't wish to pursue journalism. So here's our edit suites, we can sort of see that. Internships are a wonderful part as well. Like I said before, we have very key and long standing relationships with most media outlets in the country, particularly here in Melbourne. And, uh, and not least of which, because our graduates actually then go and work in them as well. They are our living ambassadors for just how successful um, our, our program is. And so <clears throat> they tend to go in there, they tend to rise up in the ranks as well. And it makes it easier for us to actually get internships and build on those relationships and expand on them as well. And the other thing is a lot of the employers actually like our, our interns because they are very well trained and they're ethically trained as well, which I think is an important emphasis. They are. And it's because they have that grounding, as Faye said before, where they, they, they are taught how to ethically research. And that's an important component. Um, but additionally, because they come out from facilities that already replicate those that are seen in industry. So it's easy for our students to actually go straight into a working newsroom, for example. So can I just add, there's, there's two things that you need. You can have do an internship, which is counted for credit in a unit, but also we have Julie Tolberg, who's our amazing um, manager of the internships, and she circulates up to 200 a year calls for interns that, isn't, that aren't necessarily counted towards your credit, but you, you can actually get experience, both with un undergraduate, but also the master's students as well. So there's opportunities beyond um, the unit, the internship unit, which I think is very, very important. So this was the International Field School, which we are not holding this year, unfortunately, due to the travel restrictions. So we travel to key um, international journalism sites. So there was Washington and New York. We combined both actually, Singapore and Hong Kong and Japan last year. We were intending to do London this year. We're hoping next year or certainly the year before because we've paid for the accommodation anyway. And um, so we visit local and foreign bureaus and newsrooms as well. So you can see um, there actually, we're in CBS News um, in New York, uh, where I think we've been the first group that had been taken in after 9-11 and it was about 2016 when we went. So they had been very reluctant to bring students in, but they were extremely excited and incredibly generous with their time. And you can see, and I won't list them due to time, but you'll see the other field schools that the communication programs offer as well, which you have the opportunity to join. Mojo is our, um, is basically our publication. So it is the living, breathing, breathing embodiment of where our students actually produce their work. For us, it's really important that we have a functioning masthead, so to speak where the students actually feel like they're in a real-time experience that they are publishing work that is going to be um, proofread and, and um, basically supervised by working journalists, so that the actual staff uh, in Monash Journalism.
but we help them actually get their work published and, and out there. So that enables the students to actually have, again, that portfolio that I was talking about. For us, it's also about proof. It's about having that proof to show the employers that you can do the job and what you've been able to achieve during that time. So if you want to see that, it's mojonews.com and you can have .com.au rather, and there's some links to our stories there, but we'll push on for the sake of um, getting things through. The Struggle is a program which is produced on Channel 31. Um, it's uh, done here out of Monash in Melbourne as well. We have a bunch of students who work together. They shoot, produce, they do the whole thing together. And that goes to ASO. It's another, um, another story that we do. And our students are very successful, actually. So they not only, and I think that's probably one of the most rewarding things for us, is the prizes and the success that they actually get. So, for example, uh, Matilda Bosley um, last year, was it uh, in 2019, she won the Walkley Award for Student Journalist. That is the highest award that you can get as a student journalist. As a journalist in Australia, the highest award you can get is a Walkley Award. And so it's been won by our students on a couple of occasions. Uh, Matilda was one. Uh, last year, we also, um, one of our students, Caroline Tung, won the um, Jacoby Walkley Scholarship, which is probably one of the most prestigious scholarships. It gives her time at the Nine Corporation and others uh, where she can actually invest in her skills as well. That probably leads us to talk to Holly, I would say, Kim, is that right? Yeah, I think that would be an excellent segue. <laughs> Yeah. Um, thank you both, um, Matt and Faye. It speaks a lot with, I think, all the different opportunities and also flexibility that's in the program in terms of where students can go. So, Holly, you've um, very kindly offered to join us and been very patiently waiting. <laughs> Sorry, um, Holly. What I, would <laughs> what I would love for you to talk about a little is what was your background before coming into the course with us? And I'm really keen to know, like, what made you choose this particular program with us to start with? I had no experience uh, with journalism prior to um, applying for the Master of Journalism at Monash. I had um, completed my Bachelor of Arts degree majoring in um, Chinese language and cultural studies, so very different. And um, I had, I'd left, finished that degree and gone and worked for a little while and just, I couldn't really find anything, find my place. Um, and I spoke to a careers counsellor who did some tests and, and tried to figure out where I might fit, things that I was interested in. And we kept coming back to writing. I really enjoy writing and um, I really enjoyed being around people. So those two things um, led me to looking into Monash University um, and what uh, degrees were on offer, what courses were on offer. And... Part of the appeal to me about the Master of Journalism degree was the units that were offered. They were so diverse that I thought that I'd be receiving um, a plethora of skills by the time I finished that would uh, give me an edge that perhaps other graduates wouldn't have. So that's about, that's about I guess, how I got there. Yeah, yeah. And I'm really pleased to hear that having not had that type of background, you're able to come into the program and pick everything up like that. Speaking of the types of units that you would have done, was there any standout moments in the course, like a favourite unit or experience or internship or anything that really stood out to you? I can't think of one unit that I didn't enjoy, to be honest, which doesn't sound real, but it's it's true. I, I from um, journalism and the law, which through because Monash hires professionals and people who've worked in the industry, it, it means that they're so well connected that you can um, go off site and do field trips, so to speak, and, and meet with people. So um, we went to family court or um, we went to Channel 10. Um, and so I really enjoyed journalism and the law because the ethics and the law and, and being, um, as Matt was saying before, um, being objective um, and honest and having integrity, to, to me, that's so important. Um, and and you take that, um, you can take that to, into any part of your life. Um, and I really loved my final year and um, my journalism project, which um, I did with Matt and the and learning the digital journalism. Um, I was really reluctant to learn digital journalism. I wanted to be broadsheet feature writer, um, but 
it like um, Matt and Faye were saying earlier, it gives you that broad spectrum of skills that you're gonna you're gonna need. And and without them, I wouldn't have the job that I have now. Um, so I think that that those courses, but everything. I mean, we did hard news writing, feature writing. Um, it was just very diverse. So it, it meant that I felt really uh, st um, motivated, um, stimulated to be at university um, and, and the practical side as well, the resources, they've changed a little bit since I was there seven years ago, but um, I remember spending nights in recording podcasts or using the Macs to edit my work and it was just very flexible and um, accommodating for me to be able to achieve my masters in, in that time. What Holly is being very modest in saying, however, is that she actually won the 2014 Student Journalist of the Year, the Walkley for that as well, and she won the Aussie Award for Convergent Reporting. So she actually, um, even though she said she was reluctant to, you know, that she was initially probably a little bit scared, I would say, Holly, jump in if I'm wrong, about doing anything mm -hmm. in digital, so with audio or video, anything like that, and just in that space. She actually then went on to win um, one of the major awards for a student journalist that year in convergent media, so in digital. So, Yeah, I'd like to think that I'm pretty confident uh, and I really actually really enjoyed the academic side of the masters back then with the late Philip Chubb and doing that academic research. That was so good to get me to reflect over journalism over, uh, I think it was 10 years that I was doing a comparison and that was, it just all, complimented everything I was doing and and yes I, I don't go around telling people that very often but um, I, look I definitely couldn't have got there without without doing the degree. You're very modest Holly but that's amazing achievements. Thanks. Now that you've been working in the industry I'm just thinking for a few years now um, you've reflected a little bit on you know how some of that's prepared you for it. Is there anything in particular that you found having now worked for a few years that were really key skills and really key experiences and what's really set you up? Uh, certainly you're... some of the practical skills. So um, even really basic things like um, writing campaigns, um, writing media releases, um, being able to build connections with local um, news outlets. Um, that's been, that, that wasn't necessarily easy, but it's really important. Um, Finding my voice in, I work for a um, not-for-profit. Um, it is similar to a government relations organisation, but um, there's a certain tone of our organisation. So I think um, being able to be flexible in how you apply those skills into whatever the tone is of the organisation you're working for, um, that, that came about just through having that... Um, objectivity and integrity honed in on us because we were just constantly questioned um, about our sources or um, about digging and digging deeper and deeper. And so, and you'll, and you'll notice that when you meet other people who are writing or other, when you read other stories or um, if you're working in a comms role, you're going to be pulling different um, bits of information together and you're going to see where those gaps are. Um, I think that's really important and that was really honed in on us. Um, what else do I see? I, I think uh, it, whilst I'm not doing any video journalism at the moment, I'm, I'm craving to do it. Um, but I, I like that I have the the skills behind me to be able to do podcasts if I so wish or um, if I, if there are a number of advocacy organizations or a number of organizations in the region that I live in. So what can set us apart in terms of our um, online presence? So I think I'm constantly thinking, well, my communications planning for the rest of the year or the um, next financial year, how am I going to approach that to make us, um, to give us a broader reach to support our reputation um, and to do that with the diversity of uh, online media, I think, gives us a bit of an edge. But it's it's a it's a work in progress as well. Um, Extremely adaptable, which is something mm. that I'm hearing from what you're saying, which is really pleasing to hear. And 
what I've observed from what you were just saying, Holly, and also how Matt and Faye have described the course is, it's probably giving you skills that are going to make you impactful and effective, but also that ethical side as well, which mm -hmm. is so important in that particular industry, especially right now. Yeah. So what we might do is move on to um, some of the further details here, and we'll actually come back if anyone watching actually wanted to ask Holly or Matt or Faye any questions from anything you've heard so far. As I've mentioned, please feel free to pop those into the chat, everyone. We'd love to hear them. So these are some of our graduates. Some of them are undergraduates and some of them are masters. So we've sort of converged it, but it gives you um, a fair indication of some of the more recent and more prominent ones. Um, but certainly, um, and you can go to the next slide as well, Kim. Um, you can see these are, these are the, journal, the students that actually ended up in journalism. And we'll talk about um, in a moment those that actually went into other um, either under other related industries. So for example here, and I just realized that I'd done that slide on public relations then and public relations at the end. So clearly editing is something I need to work on. But you can actually see um, how how both how diverse but also um, how expansive um, our graduates are sort of working in, but also the skills that they use as well. Um, and in many ways, a lot of these industries, they deliberately um, employ journalists because they have the skills that they need. Um, so these are some of the traditional skills of journalism plus new ones and the skills that are needed more than ever. And the other thing I think it's important to realise is many of these apply to any industry that you go to. So just anecdotally, my son is an architect and um, he often talks about how he needed some of these skills and continues to do so. So those digital um, um, skills, photography, all of these things inform many of the industries that we all have to work in. We hope um, that our students leave being able to gather and disseminate information. As Matt said at the beginning, we teach students to be both journalists and also scholars. Um, sometimes it's different writing, but good writing is clear, concise, comprehensive, um, and illuminating and interesting. And, and we adapt and use and employ new technology. I've noticed podcasting keeps on coming up and I'm not sure about many of the people who will be watching this, but clearly podcasting is an industry in itself, which we probably hadn't anticipated two, three years ago. Um, but certainly it's a very viable one um, that again, you, a skill that you would use. These are my images. I deliberately chose them because um, both they're historical, but also that idea that we want you to question everything. Um, the photograph on my left is um, uh, Caldi's, a very famous photograph, um, which was later adopted. Um, you'll notice the man, the Russian soldier. This is in Germany, um, Berlin. And you'll notice the soldier who's sort of holding onto the man with the flag. Um, it was later edited or um, obscured because he was wearing two watches and Stalin didn't like to think that um, his soldiers would be stealing watches. The implication was they were looting. And the photograph on the, on the right, which is a very handsome owl, it became a very contentious image because it later was later um, exposed that the photographer had fed it live bait to actually take that photograph. So photography is a very easy example about how people can fake, distort, change, manipulate. Um, and we want you to think about some of those issues. So again, we've often, we've talked about this all the way through and I think it, I think it deserves that, um, that emphasis that we want you to think about careers, not just in journalism, but beyond that. And as I illuminated before, most professions require communication and digital skills more than ever. And so these are some of the um, industries that you can go in um, if you don't necessarily wish to become a journalist. But the skills of journalism are just, <clears throat> they are so transferable and actually desirable. And I don't think we can really understate that enough about how one, once you understand the practice of journalism, how much, how in demand that is in many industries, government, corporate, any. 
Excellent. Thank you so much. What we'll do before we jump into the Q&A is if those of you are watching, we've excited you with what we've talked through. In terms of how to plan for what's coming next, our next intake is semester two this year and that'll be kicking off in the first week of August. The application process is quite simple and quite streamlined, all done online. Um, the link is there, so please write that down or take a screenshot or take a photo of that. And essentially when you go through that, it'll ask you what degree you want to go into and it'll prompt you to list any previous qualifications and any supporting documentation as well. And what you'll see here when we talk through the masters, the double masters, and there is also a graduate certificate that's there as well. Um, we've got a few different options of getting into the single masters degree. When you can see there's a one year, 1.5 and two year option to recap on some of those. The two year is if you maybe don't have a related background coming into that area and you'd come in and do two years of full study with that, either full time or part time if you're a domestic student. 1.5 years is if you've got a related undergraduate degree and we consider anything in humanities or social sciences and that. So it could be Bachelor of Arts, it could be Bachelor of Communications, International Relations, International Studies, across that broad suite. The one year is if you've done quite a higher level qualification, might be an honours or maybe another postgraduate qualification in humanities or social sciences. And the minimum that we're looking at there for any of those qualifications is 60%. The double masters, um, you've got a two year, and a 2.5 year entry. And that's because you're getting two master's qualifications when you graduate. Again, what we're looking at in that is the 2.5 year is if you've got a related undergraduate degree and the two years if you've got a related honours degree. What's actually really important here with the graduate certificate that we'll mention is if you don't meet the requirement to get straight into the masters, it might be that you have an overseas qualification or it might be the minimum requirement that's there. The graduate certificate is a nice pathway of getting in. And what we've also found in other programs is with the graduate certificates is they can be a nice way to sample some units get a feel for that, know that you like that's what you really want to do and it will articulate with credit into the master's degree if you want to do that. That's also a really good option. So what we've done, uh, Matt and Faye have kindly uh, put their email and phone numbers there if there's further questions after this that you have and our general arts postgraduate email is there as well. Uh, like I said, having gone through this process myself, I know there are lots of questions uh, that you're probably thinking about, lots to plan for, um, that you may want to do. So please email us anytime. And we've also got the application link there for you as well.